no, we're, we're going to talk about the Sun Belt today because uh, we kind of got a sneaky good game here going on in terms of the Sun Belt race. We got Georgia Southern traveling to Old Dominion. Georgia Southern is two and a half point underdogs. Both teams coming off a huge win. Old Dominion beating Texas State at home. And Georgia Southern beating James Madison. Both wins, by the way, by each team, double digit points. You got Old Dominion side, you got a new quarterback, Colton Joseph. Kind of playing some good football right now. You got some elite defensive talent there for Old Dominion as well. You know, been on the positive side of some variance for sure on the defensive side of the football. And then Georgia Southern with JC French and uh Clay Helton and everything that they got there. Their offense is buzzing. Defensively, they cannot say the same though. So C D uh where are you leaning here, right? And and what kind of impact is this going to leave for the rest of the Sun Belt this year? Yeah, I'll get into the impact part part first. So these are obviously two teams in the Sun Belt East. And if you're not familiar with Sun Belt, this is still a division or still a excuse me, a conference that has divisions, and the winner of those divisions, East and the West, play each other in a conference championship game that could potentially, like we said, talk, lead to a potential group of five playoff spot or or other bowl implications for college football's postseason, but this is a massive game in the middle of October, or I guess late October by the time this gets played. Georgia Southern, 3-0 in conference. Old Dominion, 2-1 in conference. Georgia Southern has tiebreakers over Marshall and James Madison, two teams that are fighting to get back into the conference race in the Sun Belt East. Georgia Southern with a win here would put themselves in the driver's seat to coast down the stretch there with at least a two-game lead over the rest of their division. Holy cow, would that be massive, massive for our guys down there in southern Georgia, right close to Savannah there. Uh, Clay Helton, the coach there, obviously everyone remembers him from uh, USC, JC French, throwing the ball very well for our Eagles in the Sun Belt. I really don't know. Old Dominion obviously had a very tough out-of-conference schedule. Right, South Carolina on the road, Virginia Tech, Bowling Green as well. You could throw them in there. They and play teams tough. They do. They do, and they played them tough. They played them hard, and, and so their record overall is 3-4, and four, but that does not tell the full story. As as Georgia Southern, as Texas State learned in the Sun Belt, once they got into it, they have been really getting after it. Listen, I, I'm just going to lean Georgia Southern here, even on the road, right, even on the road. But I'll say Georgia Southern also, they're 5-2. and two. Their losses are to Boise State, potential playoff contender Ole Miss, right, obviously in the SEC, one of the more talented teams in the country. Their resume is looking very good as well. They're coming off a very nice win against James Madison. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride the hot hand. I'm going to ride the hot hand there. Give me J.C. French. Give me this passing game. Going on the road, getting a midweek win. This is Thursday night, ESPN 2, 6 p.m. Central time, 7 p.m. local time there. I'll lay two and a half. Or I'll lay two, right? We're picking at, I think we're picking at two. Or just two and a half, excuse me. Georgia, Georgia Southern plus two and a half will be my, my pick there. Don't feel great about it. I think it's going to be a big-time game, but I do know I think the Eagles, and after a disappointing finish to the Sun Belt last year, very disappointing. I think they really want to emphasis, emphasize on finishing hard, finishing good, and be able to, to kind of cement themselves in a real good position in the Sun Belt. If J.C. French throws three interceptions against Old Dominion, they will not win this football game. They were able to pull out of a win against James Madison. Um, a lot too. James Madison was one for four on fourth down. All right, some costly penalties also cost James Madison as well, and just uh inability to run the ball uh, when they wanted to, and Barnett just uh, lacking some efficiency in that pass game as well. I, I think Joseph adds a really interesting dynamic in terms of his athleticism back there that maybe Old Dominion didn't have before. Ever since he's kind of come in the game. Old Dominion's been playing better. I believe that they're going to go with Colton Joseph. Uh, I would hope that they do moving forward. And uh, I think they got some decent talent on both sides of the ball. Um, I do think Georgia Southern is too. And the reason why I say that uh, Old Dominion's been on the beneficiary of you know some some luck on the defensive side of the ball. Nine interceptions they forced this year, which by the way, JC French loves throwing interceptions. And uh, you have a top 16 red zone defense as well in the country. A lot of bend, but don't break there because you are allowing 400 yards per game on defense. <laughs> it's it's very bend, but don't break. And Georgia Southern has had one of the best red zone offenses in the entire country. Um, Yeah, but with that being said, I'm on Old Dominion. Um, I just like the way that they're playing football. I think both teams are playing good football right now. 
But I think Old Dominion, I don't know if the market's caught up with them necessarily. Um, and I know you're, you're probably being like, well, Georgia Southern's been like dogs in like almost every game they played, and you know they're still winning. It's like, yes, I mean, they were dogs against Georgia State. They were dogs against James Madison. They were uh, dogs against uh, Boise State, right? And they seem to overperform, but I think the market's starting to catch up to them, and I don't know that the market's caught up to Old Dominion right here. I kind of like them in this spot. If you're going to give me J.C. French, who's been turnover prone in this Sun Belt, Ever since that Ole Miss game, kind of lacks uh, an ability to take care of the football. And, you know, they also give cough up the football a lot in terms of, you know, fumbling. And I know that that's a lot of variation there. But if you're not able to take care of the football um, against a team like Old Dominion, then I can't take you. So I like Old Dominion in this spot uh, with the way Colton Jillis has been playing there. So, And obviously you have one of the best defensive players in the entire country over there. So obviously real quick, I will say um, in terms of little bit potential scary for Georgia Southern, I, I love the way their defense has been playing. Honestly, even last week over overcoming all those turnovers and, and the pick six as well. Like they played some really good defense. The only thing that worries me is we have seen them at times in the Sun Belt. Oh, it's sorry. Jason Henderson is not going to be playing this game. I forgot. Yeah. He's, been, he's been out. I know it's brutal, brutal, brutal doesn't hurt, but doesn't matter. Don't matter. So, uh, Marshall, going back to Marshall game, they kind of got after Georgia Southern on the ground with their quarterbacks, right? They had over 200 yards rushing in that game, and their quarterbacks had almost 100 themselves. And that does wonder, you know, for a guy uh, like Colton Joseph, you know, can he get after the ground and, like he has been the past couple Sunbelt games and really take advantage of that? I think maybe not. I think Georgia Southern takes care of the football. I think they played – potentially some of the worst football they have offensively last week, you know, through the air and, and just sloppiness. But they looked pretty good other than that, man. I, I feel good about this air. Jalen White running the ball well. Burgess is one of the better players in the Sun Belt receiving the ball. So, yeah, I, I know you're on the, the Monarchs there, but it is what it is. And uh, Cobb, I believe, is the other receiver there. Georgia Southern. Yeah. Sure yeah. I'm, hope I can get that name right. But, uh, no, I, I've liked Georgia Southern the way that they played football, but something about Old Dominion right now just speaks to me. It could be that they cashed my dirty dog last week, but uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with the Monarchs here. 